right, so let's talk about actually getting the work done. What benefits can you get when you get the work done? What options do you even have in getting the work done? I'm gonna go into that. And also the other side of it, what happens if you don't get the work done, okay? So the first thing I wanna talk about is actually getting the work done. What products do you go with? How do you make that decision, okay? The first thing you should know is that your insurance company is gonna cover what's called like for like, meaning what you currently have up there on the roof, the quality of it, that's what they're gonna cover. That's what they're gonna pay out for. So let me give you an example, three tap shingles. Probably one of the lowest grade or lowest quality shingles is a three tap shingle. It has no impact rating, it has no wind rating, uh, most of them don't have any fire rating or anything along those lines. If you have a three tap shingle, your insurance company is gonna cover replacing it with a three tap shingle. Is that the best option? My argument is no, it's not. And the reason for that is they have better shingles nowadays and shingles that actually give you a discount on your insurance premiums. Remember in past videos where I said those premiums go up over time due to various reasons, even inflation, doesn't matter what it is, they go up over time, you can count on that. But if there's an opportunity to actually reduce that cash burden on yourself just by upgrading an insur or upgrading your shingle, my advice is do it. And the reason is there's going to be a point in time where you won't be able to get insurance to cover your roof. If it gets so old, they're not gonna cover it. They're gonna drop you to what's called an ACV only policy, where they don't cover any of that depreciation, okay? So if you have an insurance company that's willing to cover 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent, 95, depending on what your deductible is, percent of the roof, Go that extra mile, pay a little bit extra if you can swing it, and upgrade to a class three or class four impact rated shingle. The benefit is you can see upwards of about a 30% discount on your insurance premiums for doing that, okay? So this is an opportunity to get a much better roof without paying for the whole thing. It's a great opportunity to be in, okay? Another option is that you could actually finance the entire project. So. Not everybody has enough saved up to cover their deductible, especially nowadays when deductibles are becoming a percentage of the covered value of the house, no longer a flat rate. So those deductibles are becoming bigger. They're a much bigger burden to carry. And not everybody has the money saved up to, to cover that. They don't plan for that kind of thing. And it's just the nature of being a human being. So an option is to actually finance the entire project. So we already know insurance is gonna cover X amount for your roof. And we already know that you have to cover X amount, whatever your deductible is. Well, if you finance an entire amount, you don't have to pay out of your, your bank account that deductible. You can spread that out over a number of years and actually pay that off. And a large chunk of that is gonna get paid off immediately as soon as the insurance company releases that check to you. And that way you don't ever actually have to sign a check over to the contractor because you're financing the whole deal. They're getting taken care of and you get to spread out the cost of your deductible over a period of time. I mean, think of it like on Amazon, you can, you can finance $100, $50 items on Amazon and a lot of people do that just to spread out money. Why not do that on a multi-thousand dollar deductible or even more than that if you have to cover the depreciation plus your deductible. So that's also an option. And it helps you be more prepared for this kind of a project instead of you know kind of being scared of what kind of financial burden it's gonna put you in. Another thing that people like to do sometimes is if they've got student loan debt at some pretty bad rates or they've got vehicle loans at pretty bad rates or credit card debt at some pretty bad rates, you can finance this project. You know the insurance company is actually gonna release a certain amount on this project back to you, finance it, spread out that cost of the project over a long period of time at a really good interest rate and take the money from the insurance company and pay off credit card. Or take yourself on vacation that you haven't been on in a long time. There are benefits for you when something like this happens, okay? So we've gone over uh, different shingles, improving the actual quality of the roof and what that can do for you in the long term, how this is actually a really good time to upgrade the quality of the roof. We talked about financing the project to put yourself in a better cash or financial position because of this loss. So these storm events aren't necessarily a bad thing all the time. They might actually be able to help you out. Now what happens if you don't get work done? 
okay? Now that's where things get pretty hazy. So if you decide not to get the work done that the insurance company is covering, then the next time an event happens, those items won't get covered. So let me give you an example, okay? The insurance company releases that ACV amount up front. We've already discussed that. That's yours, right? Now, you can turn around and get the rest of the roof done, and then they'll release the depreciation to you afterwards, or you can choose, you know what, I'm just gonna take the ACV amount, like that's the amount that I lost on that product, I'm just gonna take that, I'm gonna pocket it. Okay, you can do that. You have the right to do that. But the next time a hailstorm hits on that roof, you're not getting anything from the insurance company. They said, hey, we gave you the chance, we, we gave you the opportunity, and you did not actually get the roof done in the, uh, before the expiration of that claim, so you've lost that um, privilege, so to speak. You, you, you don't have that entitlement anymore from the insurance company to get that covered. Now, there are gonna be things on the actual claim that you might not wanna get done. Maybe you don't wanna get the fence restained if they're covering that, or maybe you're like, ah, that's not that big of a deal, I can do it myself, or maybe you don't wanna get the gutters done, there's some dings here and there, but it's really not that big of a deal to you. You don't wanna get that done, that's totally fine. You can take those ACV amounts of those products that you aren't getting done, and you can put it towards an upgrade on the roof to help kind of offset that additional cost to get that upgrade and just make it a little bit better to do it. Or you can pocket that and it ultimately does help sort of alleviate the depreciate or the duct deductible, excuse me, it alleviates the burden of the deductible from you. Um, but just know those items won't be covered in the next storm. And to ask your contractor, hey, could you, um, could you invoice the insurance company for that anyways? And that's fraud. Okay, we want to avoid that at all costs because you'll lose your insurance and the contractor will lose your license. So just keep that in mind. Any contractor that say, I'll cover that deductible for you or I'll, I'll invoice them for those items and you can just pocket that, it'll help you out a little bit. That's fraud, don't bite into that, okay? Trust me, in the long run, it is not worth it. There are better strategies to take advantage of a claim than doing something fraudulent, okay? So you've got options when a, a claim occurs. You've got options to increase the the condition of your roof, increase the position of maybe your your financial situation at that time. Um, and, and so use it to your advantage and talk to your contractor to see what those advantages might be.